ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم مشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد As always we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledging He is the one that we worship He is the one that we turn to to seek aid and He is the one that we seek repentance from We seek repentance from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our bad deeds We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own selves or from the evil of our own actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none to mislead him. And whoever is misled, none can guide him except Allah alone. I testify that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I testify that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. After that, the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all the matters are the newly invented matters into the religion. And every newly invented matter into the religion is misguidance. And every misguidance leads to the hellfire. Amma bad. We welcome the dear brothers and sisters to another lesson. This is the seventh lesson on the 13th of Jamad al-Awwal, 1440 al-Hijrah, corresponding to the 19th of January uh, 2019. A summary from the book Al Qawl al Mufid ala Kitab al Tawheed, the beneficial statement from Kitab al Tawheed by the great Imam Allama Faqih Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin, Rahimullah, Rahmatan Wasi'a. And he descri- uh, explained this book, the Kitab al Tawheed, which is by the great Imam, the reviver of the Deen, the reviver of Tawheed, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So we've reached uh, the chapter 2 in this great book, The Excellence of Tawheed and What It Removes of Sins. The Excellence of Tawheed, Fadl al-Tawheed, Mumayu Kaffir Min al and that which it expiates or removes of sins. So this is a, a great, great th- matter which has to be understood, the great matter of Tawheed and how it gets rid of uh, sins. Uh, it gets rid of sins and removes sins. So this is a, a very important matter and a great uh, issue that it is a great blessing for the Muslims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them that if they have correct tawheed, then it gets rid of sins. Here some of the scholars have mentioned that it, tawheed expiates all sins. It gets rid of all sins, not just some and not, and not some others, but all sins. This is because Tawheed is a great good deed. There is no sin which can compare to it except that the light of this good deed burns away the effect of that sin if that light is complete. So if the Tawheed is complete, it burns away the effect of that sin. Whatever sin it is. Whatever sin it is. And like Ibn Qayyim mentioned, Ikhlas and Tawheed is a tree in the heart. Ikhlas and Tawheed is a tree in the heart. Branches are deeds, and its fruit is a good life in this dunya, and eternal bliss in the hereafter. Just as the fruits of those whose season of produce is not limited, and its supply will not be finished, likewise the fruits of Tawheed and Ikhlas in the dunya are the same. So he's bring you a nice little example of the, the blessing of Ikhlas and Tawheed. That is a tree in the heart, so that's where it starts from. Ikhlas, and having sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that tawheed, that aqeedah, that belief of tawheed, that there's none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He has no similitude, no example. Can't compare anyone, anything to him. And he is the creator, and he is deserving of this worship, of all aspects of worship, or all aspects of belief, all aspects of, of uh, reliance, and many other aspects. And, and its branches are the good deeds that a person does. And its fruits are that which a, 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 a person has of a good life in this dunya and eternal bliss in the hereafter. 
So it shows us the, the from these few statements of scholars that the great uh, status of Tawheed and how it gets rid of sins. And that's why Sheikh Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimullah, brought this chapter, chapter 2, Fadl al-Tawheed, the excellence of Tawheed, and what he expiates or removes from sins. So the first thing that we want to look at is the relevance of the chapter heading and its proof. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Wahhab rahimullah, brought uh, the uh, first verse as an evidence to f- show for his chapter heading, and that is the, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانُهُمْ بِظُلْمِ It is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship Him alone and confuse not, you know, do not mix up their belief with dhulm, okay, with uh, wrongdoing, worshipping others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al further on in the chapter, he mentions the... Um, and the relevance of this 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 uh, chapter heading and, and 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 the verse in the Quran, this verse in the Quran that he brings as a proof, it says Shaykh Uthaymin, Rahimullah, he said, Allah affirms security. Okay, so the the, the verse means says those who believe, uh, those it is those who believe in the oneness of Allah. This is Surah Al An'am, Ayah eighty two. Those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship none but Him, and confuse not their belief with dhulm. Okay, um, that's as it, as is mentioned in the text of the book, and the complete ayah. And this is very important to understand. The complete ayah, it says, "Alladina amunu wa lam yalbisu imanhum bi dhulm, ulaika lhamul aman muhammadun." It is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship none but Him, and confuse not their belief with dhulm. For them. There is security and they are the guided ones. For them is security and they are the guided ones. That's, that's the, the beauty of having Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not committing shirk. That there will be security. They will have security and that they will be guided. So here Shaykh Thaymin says, Allah affirms security for the one who does not commit shirk. Allah affirms security for the one who does not commit shirk. Because Allah puts that, you know, that um, tranquility in a person's heart. Allah puts that tranquility in your heart when you believe that in the Tawheed of Allah, that you believe that only Allah is the one uh, to be worshipped. Yeah? All my sacrificing, all my du'as, all my reliance, all my trust, all my uh, uh, love, everything is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? True love and true devotion and true sincerity and true reliance. It's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that person will have security. So the Shaykh said, Allah affirms security for the one who does not commit shirk. Allah affirms security. The person who does not commit shirk is a muwahid. A person who singles out Allah alone for worship. So this indicates that from the virtues of Tawheed is the consolidation of security. This is what Shaykh Uthameen said. He said... Allah affirms security for the one who does not commit shirk. The person who does not commit shirk is a muwahid, a person who singles out Allah alone for worship. So this indicates that from the virtues, the excellence of Tawheed is the consolidation of security. Allah will secure you. Okay? Yeah, we'll be tested and these type of things because we'll not be left alone saying that we just believe in La ilaha illallah and not actually implement it, as Allah has mentioned in the Quran. We will not be left alone without being tested. But the point is that Allah will give us security in our hearts and He will have security in the hereafter. We'll have security in the hereafter. So the stronger the, secu- the, the, the belief and reliance and the trust and all the rest of it is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the stronger, the greater that security will be and that person will have peace of heart and in, for the dunya and in the hereafter. This ayah, uh, Shaykh Uthaymin brings this ayah and, and explains the correct uh, context of this ayah, the correct context of this verse, okay? The correct context of this verse. And the correct context of this verse 
is. So the Sheikh of he says, uh, that they do not oppress themselves with dhulm. Okay, they, 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 they do not um, confuse their, uh, sorry, they do not mix up their iman with dhulm. The Sheikh says, a dhulm huna is that which is um, contrast to iman. The dhulm which is mentioned here is contrast to uh, iman. And that is shirk, okay? And that is shirk, okay? The, um, the, 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 the contrast here is shirk, okay? Uh, in contrast to iman, the op- opposite of iman is shirk, okay? Um, then the Sheikh says, when this verse was revealed, it became difficult for the companions. It became difficult for the companions, okay? So they said, which one of us does not oppress ourselves? Yeah? Which one of us does not oppress ourselves? Yeah, and they misunderstood this verse, basically. That's what it was. And, and, and this is a very important lesson for us, that we go back to the correct understanding of ayat and source and references and texts. They said, which one of us doesn't com- uh, oppress ourselves? Because the ayah mentions those who believe in one- oneness of Allah and do not confuse their belief with dhulm, okay, with wrongness, because they un- de- misunderstood this word dhulm. They didn't understand what was the correct meaning of dhulm here. Okay? So they said, which one of us doesn't commit dhulm? All of us oppresses. A dhulm is uh, oppression. The word in, in Arab, uh, the English translation will be oppression. Um, and in Arabic, the, the term actually means putting something in its wrong place. Placing something in its wrong place. So that, that's how they uh, uh, view the word, give the definition for oppression. Okay, the, 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 the definition for it is placing something in its wrong place. Oppression, dhulm. So they, they said, which, which one of us doesn't commit dhulm, a, a wrongdoing? That's how they understood the word to be wrongdoing. But rather the word means meant shirk. Why? Because the Prophet said, Laysal Amr Kamatadunud. It's not as you have presumed or as you have understood. So it shows us the understanding in the Arabic language at that time, Dhulm, meant wrongdoing or oppressing oneself. Okay? So the Prophet explained to them. He explained to them that uh, because they said uh, which one of us does not confuse our iman with dhulm, oppression? He said, it's not that which you presume. It's not that which you presume. So the here, the Prophet ﷺ was teaching the companion and explained to them the meaning of these, this verse. And he said, إنما المراد, in, rather the, the meaning is, and, and, uh, 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 is shirk. إنما المراد بهي الشرك. Okay? Do you not hear the statement of the, the righteous slave of Allah? He's talking about Luqman alayhi salam. He said, Oh my son, when Luqman said, and this is in the Quran, okay, Surah Al An'am, uh, so, so it's in the Quran, okay, and it says, uh, Surah Luqman, ayah 13, sorry, Surah Luqman, ayah 13, Oh my son, do not join in worship others with Allah. Verily, joining others in worship with Allah is a great dhulm. Okay, in the shirk al dhulmun azim. Okay, oh my son. You are not in worship others with Allah. Verily, joining others in worship with Allah is a great dhulm. Dhulmun azim. Okay? So, and this is a hadith which is mentioned in Bukhari, Muslim, and uh, Muslim Ahmed. Okay? So here, the Prophet Sallallahu is explained to the companions the tafsir of this ayah, which were, they presumed when they read it that it meant that they oppressed themselves by doing something which is wrong. But the Prophet explained, no, it's shirk. This is what is the great dhulm that you have to keep away from. You do not confuse your your belief, your aqidah with dhulm, yani meaning shirk. So you don't mix shirk with tawheed. And they are the two opposite extremes, the two opposite uh, 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 ends. Shirk is on one side and tawheed is completely on the other side, far, far away. Because they're completely separate, completely separate. There's no possible way to equate shirk, pointing partners with Allah, with tawheed, and singling out Allah alone for worship. It's not possible. 
They're complete two different ends. Tawheed is one thing, and shirk is something completely different. Okay, so here uh, that is rather that is shirk, like the the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Yeah, rather that is shirk. Yani the dhulm which Allah has pro- pro- told us to pro- prohibited us from is shirk. Then Shaykh Uthaymin Rahimullah goes on to explain about the different types of oppression. The different types of oppression. And he mentions three types. Okay? He mentions three types. He said the first type of oppression, the different types of oppression, the f- three types. Of, the first one is Adlam al-Dhulm, the worst type of oppression, which is committing shirk regarding the rights of Allah. Adlam al-Dhulm, wa huwa shirk fi haqqillah. Yeah, the worst type of oppression is committing shirk regarding the rights of Allah upon us. The rights that Allah has, these are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot, you know, um, apply them to anybody else. Okay, and this is like some of the Shia Rafida, they give some of the rights of Allah to their Imams and their leaders. You know, they give the rights which are purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they ascribe them and they claim them for their leaders and their Imams and their and their, um, their so called righteous people who are hiding in caves and these type of things. They give them that uh, divine characteristic. This is the worst type of oppression, which is committing shirk with the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type the shaykh mentions is a person oppresses his own self. Uh, he oppresses his own self. He does not give his, his own self his rights. For example, uh, the shaykh says, a person fasts without ever breaking his fast. Or uh, somebody who continuously prays and he does not sleep. You know, so it is, he stands and he prays and he does not sleep whatsoever. Okay, you know they oppress their own physical selves, their own bodies, and this is extremism. This is extremism which the religion of Islam is far away from that. And we'll see that later on when the Sheikh explains about bid'ah, uh, innovations, and these type of things. Okay, where it's not allowed for us to oppress ourselves. It's not allowed for us to oppress ourselves. And number three, the Sheikh says. A dhulm al insan ghayrihi, a person oppressing someone else, a person oppressing someone else. For example, a person attacks someone. The sheikh says a person attacks someone by hitting him, or killing him, or taking someone else's wealth, etc. So the sheikh says, therefore, if oppression is negated, security occurs. Yeah, if oppression is negated, security occurs. Okay. So these are the three types of oppression. And the worst type is oppression which is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you find, you know, people with small intellect, uneducated, ignorant, right? You know, thinking themselves so highly of themselves. And we're talking about the khawarij. We're talking about these terrorists. You know, people who uh, misplace, uh, they commit oppression because they mi- take out of context the, the text of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and they place them in the wrong place. They don't have any example from the Salaf. Rather, they have examples of their, their, their terrorist leaders like Usama bin Laden and Abu Qatada and Sayyid Qutb and these type of people. That's where their examples are. This is where they're taking their, their, their religion from. Okay? They have no example from the Prophet ﷺ, from the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the great uh, Imams of Islam. They don't have any example from this. So, what do they say? They say that the worst is oppression is the oppression when somebody oppresses somebody else. So they for, for, forgo the first one, which is the worst, when it's oppression against Allah, and they forgo the oppression which is upon themselves, and they, uh, they, they turn it upside down, and they say the first oppression which is accountable for is uh, oppressing somebody else. Yeah? Oppressing somebody else. And they'll quote to you ayat and hadith and stuff, you know, about how opp- oppression is so bad and that's why we have to do something, we have to get up and we have to go fight and train and these type of, you know, false arguments and f- doubts and stuff, you know, that they, they, they bring to the youngsters. Completely wrong. Completely wrong. The first and the worst type of oppression is, is committing shirk. Putting partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the prophets came with. That's what they came to teach the people. That's what they came to correct. 
I came to correct that, and you guys want to jump up and say, see, the oppression, uh, uh, that's why you people stay quiet about those Saudi, you know, rulers staying in their big castles with their golden taps and this, that, and golden yachts, and, you know, all types of false arguments which they've read from the Western media, okay? And they bring these arguments, and they misplace it, and they hype up the youngsters, and they show them videos of jihad and killing, and hype them up, and then these youngsters start falling into that trap and start following them. No, we have to understand that oppression, like the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, it is shirk. It is shirk, and this is the worst type of thing. We're not negating that these other points are oppression, no. It is oppression, but look at the first type. Look at the, the one that is the most important. If you correct that, the others will fall into place as well. When a person corrects his tawheed, he has security, he has tranquility, he knows what he's doing is correct. But if he doesn't have correct tawheed, then he starts oppressing himself. And then he starts oppressing other people. So this is what we need to correct. We need to correct the oppression or the dhulm against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhulm of shirk. We have to start addressing that. Teaching it to the people. Then the Shaykh Uthaymin, he goes on to say, he says, and he brings, and he, he, this is his style, that he brings in his explanations. You know, he'll, he'll bring a question and then answer the question to explain it to the people. Or he'll bring a, a, a doubt that many people have and he'll explain it. He'll say, here he said, with entafa al-dhulm, hasil al-aman. If if uh, oppression is uh, extinguished, then uh, security occurs. He said, but is it complete security? Is it complete security that you will occur? He says the answer is, he said, if the iman was kamil, if your iman was complete, and is not mixed with ma'asi, okay, it's not uh, mixed with sin, sin, sinning, then the aman will be mutlaq, it will be complete, hay qamil, it will be uh, absolute. That, that security that Allah will give you will be absolute. And if uh, the iman is, uh, uh, if the iman is not complete, okay, then it is, the, if the iman is not complete, then the security will be not complete. He said, the, the example of this is, if somebody carries out a major sin, a person carries out a major sin, he's secure from being, uh, he's secure from being in the hellfire forever. Yeah, a person carries out a major sin, but he's secure from being uh, uh, in the hellfire forever. But he's not secure, secure from being punished. Rather, he's under the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, this is a nice point and very important point to understand. You know, because they say, see, oh, I have, you know, complete iman. I've got, you know, why, sh why, why don't I have complete security? No, it's not the case. Yeah, If it is, you have, sorry, I, I don't oppress anybody. I have complete, you know, completely free from oppression. Yeah? Completely free from oppression. Then why don't I have complete security? Yeah, the Shaykh is saying, if you have complete Iman, which does not have any sinful in it, in it, in it then you have complete security. But if your uh, the Iman is not complete, uh, then you will not have complete security. And it's like the person who commits a major sin. The example is given. He will not stay in the hellfire forever, but he's not free from punishment. He's under the permission of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَكْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ Indeed, Allah does not forgive the one who commits shirk with him. And he forgives anyone who does anything less than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, this ayah, uh, another ayah, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, uh, mentioned another ayah uh, uh, about uh, um, Ibrahim alayhi salam. About Ibrahim alayhi salam, okay, in Surah Al An'am, ayah 81 to 83. Yeah, he talks about Surah Al uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, where he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, the translation is, how, how, And how should I fear those whom you associate in worship with Allah? Though they can neither benefit nor harm. So this is Ibrahim alayhi salam saying, how can, how can I fear those whom you associate in worship with Allah? Though they can neither harm nor benefit. 
while you do not fear that you have joined in worship with Allah things for which he has sent down no authority. So which of the two parties has the more right to be in security if you but knew? It is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship none but him and confuse not their belief with dhulm the wrongdoing, worshipping others besides Allah for them alone is security and they are the rightly guided okay? and then the shaykh says but a person could say that this is from the, uh, the, the people we raise whom we will in degree certainly your Lord is all wise, all knowing okay? all wise and all knowing so here the shaykh is explaining that if you have complete iman, then you will have complete security. And if you have nakis iman, deficient iman, you have deficient security. Okay, so this is the the verse that we're looking at. Alladina amanu wa lam yalbisu iman hum bidhulm ulaika hum al aman wa hum muhtadun. Yeah, and they are the muhtadun. They are the ones that Allah uh, will give security. On in the dunya and in the hereafter, and may Allah make us from amongst those who uh, He gives a security to, on in in the dunya and in the hereafter. The next text which we're going to look at is the the statement of Ubad ibn Samit, radiyallahu anhu, of the the hadith that he narrates. Sorry, Ubad ibn Samit, radiyallahu anhu, where he said. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is a hadith in Bukhari, Man shahida an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu, whoever testifies that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah alone, who, who is without a partner, wa anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu, and that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger, wa anna Isa abdullah wa rasooluhu, and that Isa is the slave of Allah and his messenger, وَكَلِمَتُهُ أَلْقَاهَا إِلَى مَرِمُ رُوحٌ مِّنْ And uh, his word which he bestowed in Maryam and a ruh, a, a spirit created from him وَجَنَّةُ الْحَقِّ وَنَّارُ الْحَقِّ And that paradise is a reality and hellfire is a reality أَدْخَلَهُ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ Then Allah admits him into paradise with, uh, uh, according to his deeds in accordance to his deeds. And then this is a evidence that uh, Muhammad Abdul Wahhab Rahimullah brought uh, for this uh, issue of that uh, uh, Allah, the excellence of Tawheed and what it expiates and gets rid of sins. Okay? Gets rid of sins. Um, our Shaykh, Shaykh Uthaymeen, goes on to explain this this uh, this hadith in a lot of detail and he refutes the philosophers and these type of people so the sheikh goes on and he explains that this point he explains and the point that we want to look at is when it says man shahida an la ilaha illallah whoever testifies that there is none worthy of worship in in, in truth except allah alone yeah this this point he says the shahada, this testification, is acknowledgement with the tongue. It is acknowledgement with the tongue. Okay, so it's a very important point that uh, the person, when he becomes Muslim, that he actually says this testification with his tongue. He actually says, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah," that I testify, there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah. Okay, he has to actually actually say that statement. And we say this statement in uh, every day in our prayer, uh, when we hear the adhan, where we hear, um, when we reply to the adhan, when we when we're praying, in our prayer uh, five times a day, we're constantly uh, in in the shahud. We you know we we're constantly testifying to this point that there is none worthy of worship except Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone. But we have to know what we're saying. It's very important to know what we're saying, especially in our prayer. For us to benefit from our prayer, we have to know what we're saying in our prayer. So the testification is acknowledgement with the tongue. And that's why even in the prayer, the lips have to move. There are some people that pray and they don't move their lips. 
They don't move their lips. They stay. Si they don't move their lips, and they stay silent. And they say, "I'm reading it in my head, or I'm reading it in my heart." No, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, we know that it is uh, obligatory for a Muslim when he prays that he actually moves his lips. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that he has to be audible. Yeah. But he actually moves his lips. Why? Because we know that the Prophet Sallallahu the Sahaba, when they prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, and this was a Dhuhr and Asr prayer, one of those prayers, quiet prayers, silent prayers, we used to see his beard moving from the side. Like So they line up behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the front of the prayer, and they could see his, his, you know, his beard moving, his chin, you know, his face moving. Meaning that he would recite in the quiet prayers and that his lips would move okay that's how they saw it from the side or from behind him they could see his beard moving then he was moving his lips so for the prayer we should move our lips and it's not something that we say well i can't, i find more you know uh khushur, more you know, hum humbleness when i or humility or more uh, uh, uh tranquility when I recite with my eyes closed, my, my, you know, say, reciting it in my mind, thinking, contemplating it. No, we say it, you know, with our, uh, we recite with our lips, with our lips moving, and we read it, uh, and we comprehend and understand what we're saying. So, testification is acknowledgement with the tongue. And belief with the heart. Belief with the heart. You know, having certainty, belief. You know, having that creed in your heart, you know, completely. That means that because the heart uh, is is the place where you know the the, the belief uh, is placed, and iman is placed, and it actually has that. You know, um, uh, if if the heart is good, yeah, and it has iman, it will show on the limbs. Okay, it will show on the limbs. So having belief with the heart, and then he says. وَالْتَصْدِيقْ بِالْجَوَارِ An affirmation with the limbs. Affirmation with the limbs. Yani with actually carrying out yani worship or doing good deeds. The Shaykh said, When the munafiqoon, hypocrites, said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, نَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ We bear witness that you indeed, that you are indeed the Messenger of Allah. And this is an ayah in the Quran, Surah so Munafiqoon, first, 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 first verse, first ayah. Yeah, in the Quran, where the, the hypocrites, you know, the munafiqoon, they said, we testify, we bear witness that you indeed, <coughs> that you indeed, you are indeed the Messenger of Allah. The Shaykh said, this statement of theirs was confirmed with three forms of confirmation you know, and affirmation. In Arabic, they said, nashhad, you know, we, nashhadu, is that we testify. The word inna, innaka, yeah, in Arabic. Inna here is, is and it's a, um, what's the word? Uh, it's an emphasis in Arabic language when you say inna, okay, we say inna, it means indeed, surely, verily. So it's a confirmation and affirmation and emphasis. La rasul, la rasul, innaka, la rasul. This lam here, la, here is another letter which is used in, in certain, uh, Phrases in cert with certain words has a testification or an affirmation or emphasis. So there's three: shahada, inna, wallam. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that they lied due to His saying. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, uh, "Wallahu ya'lamu inna kala rasuluhu." Indeed, Allah knows that you are His messenger. Wallahu yashhad, and Allah testifies, inna. So Allah brings the same uh, uh, affirmation and testification, shahada, inna, and the lam, to blast them out of the water. That in, you know, that that they are liars. That they are liars. They haven't actually believed. They claim to testify. They claim to bear witness, but they do not bear witness. So Allah knows. Uh, the ayah verse mentions, Allah knows that you are indeed His messenger, and Allah bears witness. That the hypocrites are liars indeed. Okay, liars indeed. The Sheikh says, therefore, this affirmation with their tongues did not benefit them because it's empty from the belief of the heart and empty from the affirmation with deeds. So it does not benefit them. So the testification cannot be reality except with belief in the heart, acknowledgement with the tongue, and affirmation with good deeds.
Okay, so it has to be belief in the heart, acknowledgement with the tongue, and affirmation with good deeds. So it shows the state of the munafiqun, the state of the munafiqun. Okay, the, uh, the, the, this testification. Then the Sheikh goes on to explain wahdahu la sharika lahu. Okay, wahdahu la sharika lahu. Okay. And here, wahdahu la sharika lahu, meaning alone, who has no partners. Worshipping Allah alone, who has no partners. Okay. So here the Shaykh says, regarding this statement, Yani Shaykh Uthaymin, he said, the word alone is a confirmation, is a confirmation for the affirmation of who has no partners. So it says, alone, wahdahu, wahdahu, yani alone, la sharika lahu. So this word, wahdahu, alone, is a confirmation for the affirmation yani, uh, who has no partners yani, this is to be yani, completely sure completely understand that you know there is none worthy of worship except Allah alone the Sheikh says this is a confirmation of a negation of associating anything ev- everything which is specific to Allah yeah? this is a confirmation yani, this is ta'kid, yani, this is to sure it of negating, cancelling out, associating everything which is specific to Allah. From Rububiyyah, His Lordship, U Ilahiyya, yani, uh, singling out for worship, and Asma wa Sifat, and His names and His characteristics. The Shaykh said, This is why the Prophet and other than him from the believers used to seek refuge to Allah Ta'ala when calamities occurred. They used to seek refuge with Allah when calamities occurred. A Bedouin came to the Prophet ﷺ while his companions were nearby. And the Prophet had hung his sword on a tree. And the Bedouin had taken, this, had taken out his sword. Yeah? And he said, he said to the Prophet, Who will protect you from killing who will protect you from me killing you? Who will protect you from me killing you? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will protect me. Allah will protect me. Yamna'ani Allah. Yeah, Allah will protect me. He did not say my companions. He did not say all oh, my companions will come running to protect me. And the Shaykh says, and this is the implementation and purification of Tawheed al-Rububiyya. Implementation and purification of Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. This is because Allah is the one who possesses benefit, harm, creating, control, and disposal of all dominion, since He has no associate with Him in that which is specific for Allah from Rububiyyah, Ilahiyyah, and Asma'i Sifat. It's beautiful, you know, SubhanAllah, you know. May Allah bless all the brothers and sisters to be able to uh, uh, read Arabic language. Yeah, read Arabic. When you read these things in Arabic, really it just drives it home so well and so strong. Yeah, and in the Arabic, the real taste and the flavor is in the Arabic, really. The, the sweetness is with the Arabic language. Here, yeah, and, uh, inshallah, hopefully we can give you an, uh, an exposure to it here through the English. But really, when you read this stuff in Arabic, subhanAllah, it just takes it to a different level altogether. May Allah bless all our brothers and sisters, Muslims, to be able to uh, have the uh, capability and the opportunity to study and learn the Arabic language. And you will see it yourself, that when you just listen to an ayah in the Qur'an being recited behind the Imam, how your heart... And he, it just starts flying in the, uh, 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 in, in, into the sky like a butterfly. Subhanallah, it's an amazing feeling. So here, the Shaykh said, the, the Prophet didn't say my companions will come running. He said, and this is the implementation and purification of Tawheed al-Rububiyya. Yani Allah's Lordship. This is because Allah is the one who possesses benefit, harm, creating, control, and disposal of all the dominion. Since he has no associate with him in that which is specific for Allah. For Allah from Rububiyya, Uluhiyya, Ilahiyya, and Asma with Sifat. Inshallah, we'll end there for today's lesson. 
because the next section is pretty long and it talks about وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ that the Muhammad is his slave and his messenger and it's a pretty long session um, the explanation what the Sheikh brings so it brings some really beautiful benefits beautiful beautiful benefits in its explanation by the way we are summarizing this so this is a sum, summarized form of what we're giving you uh, from this great book and this great explanation and there are many many other benefits we're just skipping pages and pages of benefits uh, due to the constraints of our, our situation um, but inshallah hopefully there, there's some khair some benefit in that bismillah and inshallah we'll continue in our next lesson bismillah by Allah's permission uh, looking at this section about uh, of the hadith that uh, testifying that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. With that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with what we've heard and give us the strength to implement what we benefit from uh, with uh, sincerity and good actions. May Allah reward the dear brothers and sisters who organize these uh, lessons. Jazakumullah khairun for listening. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illallah anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk